and hello everyone welcome back to another NIM tutorial in this tutorial we'll be taking a look at modules and creating our own custom module now you might be wondering what exactly is a module so a module are other NIM files outside of just your main.nim you can use these files to organize your code or to make your life easier by putting functions in them and then assigning those functions to that specific module. NIM already has a bunch of these modules built in for us. They are found inside the standard library. So when we do something like import std, which means for standard library, and then strutils. strutils is a custom NIM module provided to us from the standard library in NIM. It allows us to do things like var a is equal to, this is a very long string, and then to go echo a dot split as an example. This is part of the string utils module. If we were to not import this, we cannot use this function because this function can only be used once we import this, since this will import the function for us. If we run this, we will get a split string. So this is a module. Now let's actually create our own custom modules. I'm going to clean up here. So let's create a file called mymodule.nim. Now this will be our module that we can use to do a couple of cool things. In this case, we are only going to have three functions. Procedure say hello, name, colon string, and this will just echo hello name. Now, of course, inside of this module, you are allowed to import modules from a different module, whether it is your own or one provided by NIM. This module is exactly the same as your main.nim file. The only difference is it isn't the main.nim file. This module will be imported instead. And to make sure we can use this say hello function outside of this module, we can use this asterisk, which means make this procedure public, meaning anyone can see and use this procedure. Now, if you weren't to add that, then this procedure is only available inside of this module. But once you add an asterisk, it is available inside of any module that imports this module. We can also do another one. Instead of saying, say hello, we can do say goodbye. And here we can say goodbye. And then finally, let's create a module that is only available in this module. Or let's create a procedure that is only available in this module. Procedure, subtract, x, y, which are both int. It returns an int and it returns x minus y. So this one is only available inside here. You'll notice we even get here that says it's declared, but it is never used. It doesn't say the same for these because they might be used outside of this module. Cool. Now that we have our own module with two public functions, procedures, and one non-public, let's actually import it. So we can just go import my module. And now we can say, say hello, Mike. If we were to run this, then we get hello, Mike. So we imported this function right here. Now let's say you want to import everything except for a specific function, because let's say you have already defined such a function in one of your modules or inside of your main.nim and you do not want them to clash in any way. Then what you can do is you could say accept, say goodbye. This will import all of the functions or procedures inside of this module except for the say goodbye one. This is a great way to go about it if you have a say goodbye function already and you don't want this say goodbye function and that say goodbye function to cause issues in your code because they might work differently. If you run the code, it will still work, but now you cannot use a say goodbye unless you remove this except. Now you might be wondering, but what if the module is in a different folder? So let's create a new folder called custom. And here we can just add a new file called my other module.nim. And here we can create a procedure called 
print, which is a public procedure, and it can take in a word or text, which is of type string. And all it does is it makes sure that it calls echo on that piece of text. So if you like Python syntax more, then there you go. Now you have a Python print. And let's also do procedure draw line, which is public. And it just echoes out a line. Simple as. Now in here, if you need to import it from a different file or different folder, similar to how we did std slash str utils, this std here, and you might also sometimes see people use pkg. These two are basically invisible folders. They're optional to put there, but they're in a sense invisible folders. Now, the same can be done here. So if I go custom, this is just not an invisible folder. It's one we created. If we say custom and we import my other module, so the one right there. So inside of custom, we have my other module. That's what we're doing here. Then we can do draw line. And now a line will be drawn. But let's say you want to import from that module, but you only want to import specific functions. Well, then you can say, instead of import, you can say from. So you're saying from this module, only import the draw line. And of course, if you add a comma, you can add whatever else like print. But if you only want to import one thing, then you can just do draw line. Now, the reason you might want to only import one or two things is because it can help reduce the chances of there being two functions with the same name that are being imported into your project. And now they are clashing and doesn't know which one should be used. My rule of thumb is usually if you're importing five or less items, use from and import them individually. If you're importing more than five items, then you can just use import and import everything. Now you might be wondering, okay, but what if you want to import multiple folders from this custom or multiple files from this custom here? So let's just go mod and I'm just gonna say mod.nem, simple as. So let's just go procedure call me, which is a public procedure takes in a number and you know phone numbers should be stored as a string because they start with zero or with plus, which cannot be stored inside of a number. And that is equal to echo calling number. There we go. So now here we have another one. Now, one way you can do it is you can import like this custom and then mod. And I think mod is a keyword. So let me just call this mod one. Okay. Then here we can just, instead of mod, we say mod one. That's better because it was blue. So it was most likely a keyword and we can just say import. What can I import? Uh, what did I just create? I created a call me and we do that. Call me, call me. And here we go. What not run it and it will work. Now there is a more efficient way of doing this. So let's say you just want to import them. You don't want to say from. So we go like this, say import. Same here. We don't care about what we're importing. We just say import. And there we go. Now if we run this, it works as expected. However, you might notice that if you have a bunch of files inside of this folder, a bunch of modules, and you're importing a bunch of them, it might get a little crowded up here. So one thing you can do is go like this, put brackets around here, say comma mod one. And this way from the same folder, it will import both of these. So if we run this, it will still work because both of them are being imported. The only difference is this time we are using brackets. Now you didn't need to store functions in here. Let's say with mod one, we can also have variables such as variable name, which is equal to Nick. And let's also add another variable, age, int, which is equal to 55. Now take note, they are not public. We are not marking them as public. Sometimes with 
variables, you do need to mark them as public and we'll get into when and why later in more tutorials. But for right now, just know that you do not have to mark these as public to use them. Now you can go here and say include and custom slash mod one. Now what this is doing is it's including the code from that module. So if it's not public, you can say echo name and age. And now even though they're private variables, we can still use them. So we do this, Nick and the age is 55. You could make them public as such, in which case you don't need to use include. You can just do this and it will work as well. I haven't really seen include being used in the wild, but it's good to know that it exists. And then finally, as the last module topic we have to cover, importing as. So to import as something, you can go, and let's just copy this and say, from my other module as MOM for my other module, import, and we just import nil. Nil means don't import anything. This means if you want to use anything that is inside of this module, we need to use MOM. So MOM and in dot draw line. We can't just go draw line. As you'll see, if we remove this, we can't do that. We have to go MOM dot. Now doing it like this, and if you run it, of course it works, is a very safe and great way to import modules. The reason behind it is if you have multiple modules that you're importing, then those modules wouldn't fight with which function to use and your functions won't have to fight with them either. So if I have a procedure draw line and this procedure draw line doesn't draw line, it goes echo no, right? These two won't fight. If we just do this, import draw line, then now we have an issue because, and let's just remove that. Because now, which draw line do you think it will use? Will it use this one to be defined up here? Or this one we're importing? It will use the one to be defined up here, even though we're importing it. So if you do that, we'll get no. Now, this can also be an issue if you have two modules. Let's say my other module two as an example. And you also import draw line from there. Now, if we don't, let's say we don't have this one here. Now, which one will it use? We don't know, probably the last one that was imported, even though you're importing both. That is why it is a good idea to sometimes do this, import as and then give it an alias and then import nothing. Because when you do it like this, you know exactly what is coming from where. Now it is not needed to do this. You could of course just go import OS and then you can go OS dot and add a bunch of things here such as is absolute and I believe we just go slash is slash is slash cool and this will work as well but the difference is this here is only for your comfort if you were to remove that it will still work perfectly fine so it's up to you which you prefer you can either do it like this or you can say from os and as os import nil or you can do this this also works. It's up to you which one you want. This one is basically it forces you to use OS dot and what you want to use. Whilst this one gives you the option to add it or not add it. So it's up to you which you prefer. Do you like it when it's strict with you and it forces you to use OS or the alias dot? Or do you prefer it when you can remove this? In larger modules, you will always actually want to use this or in larger projects. In smaller projects, it doesn't really matter. It's up to you when you want to use it and how you want to use it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next NIM tutorial.